Today's video is going to be all about access forms. A form is a data entry screen. Uh, so you can make nice looking, user friendly, fully customizable data entry screens in access, and they're called forms. Now a form can come from either from a table or from a query. So what's the difference? Well, if you want to show all of the records, then you make the form come from the table. But if you only want to show certain records, then you make the query and then make the form come from the query. All right. So first, I want to show you a very quick way to make a form. It's called an auto form. We're going to click on a table. And let's say we pick on the products table and then we pick on the uh, create menu. And then we come over here and simply pick on the word form. And just like that, it's going to make an instant format uh, from that table. Now it's going to use all of the fields. OK, so just made a really quick form. Have your record navigator down there. Uh, then if we look at the top, we have um, sort and find. So it makes a really nice form for you. Then you can always go back to design view to modify that form. So watch again. We'll make an auto form. It's the quickest way to make a form. Uh, we'll save that form. And I'm going to use FRM underscore products. That's a naming standard that a lot of people use. They'll pre prefix their forms with FRM. And uh, let's try that again. So I'll pick on the supply, the shippers table. I'll pick on the word create. I'll pick on form. And just like that, it makes an instant form view. That's called the auto form. I'm going to close that window. Now remember, you can always go back to design view. And I'll show you that in the video as we go through. So I'll say yes to save that. And we'll call it FRM underscore shippers. Now, um, I like another way to make a form also. It's called the form wizard. I like the form wizard because it allows you to pick and choose your fields, whereas the auto form chooses all of the fields. So I'll pick on the create menu and we'll pick on the form wizard, as you can see. Good. Now, in this case, we'll pick a table and I'll pick the orders table. There's how we can make it from queries as well. But I'll use the orders table. And then you can start picking your fields. So I'll pick on order ID, customer ID, employee ID, order date, required date, freight, and order amount. All right. So you see we have a bunch of fields. You can choose as much as you wanted to. So I'll pick on next. Now it's asking about the layout of the form. Columnar is like the one we just saw where you have one record per screen. Uh, so notice how it looks over here. The field name is on the left and the actual field is to the right of the field name. And it's one record per screen, screen that's called tabular. I mean, that's called columnar. Tabular, on the other hand, is where you have a list of records and the, the field names are above there. All right, so we'll pick on uh, columnar and I'll pick on next. Those are the top two that you use most of the time. So I'll pick on next. And then that's it for the wizard. So let's see what kind of form the wizard makes for us. And you can see it makes a very nice form based on the fields that we selected. So if you want to use all of the fields, you might as well use the uh, auto form. However, if you only want to see certain fields, then you can use the form wizard. So notice when it puts you onto a form, it puts you onto the first record. If you look down here in the record navigator, we're on the first record. And uh, I can use the record navigator, of course. Let's go to a new record. One way to do that is with this um, icon over here of the, uh, the asterisk that says new record. Another way to add a new record is up here with the word new. Now, it's on a blank record. It always has the record at the bottom of the table, which doesn't really matter because we can always sort it on any field, but it does always add the record to the bottom of the table. Now, when a field says new like that, that's one of those auto number fields. So I can't type there. Now, I'm going to pick on that, pull that for the customer. What happens is if you make that field a lookup using the lookup wizard at the table level, it'll also be a lookup here at the form level as well. So that's why the employee and the customers are lookups. Good. Now the order date is one of those date fields. And because of that, the calendar comes up and I can pick a date or I can pick on today's date. Wouldn't it be nice if today's date uh, popped up automatically? So I'll show you how to uh, pre-populate a field and maybe the required date wouldn't that be nice if that came up with two dates, uh, two weeks from today's day? So I'll show you how to do that one as well. And then um, for the freight and the amount, you know, you can type in numbers there. So 
here we have a nice form. Now I can really customize this and do all kinds of things to it, and that's what we're about to see. I, I would highly recommend that you use the auto form or the form wizard to give yourself a great head start. Then you can always go back to design view later on. Here's how to go to design view. We're going to right click on that tab that says orders, and then I'll pick on design view. Now we can add a lot of things to this form. Uh, when you're in design view, I'm going to pick on the design tab and you're going to start adding things into this form. So let's say I want my company name right there. Start to add these controls. The AA is a text control, or it's a label. So I'm going to pick on that and I'll, I'll just click right there and I'll say uh, the PC guy is the name of my company. And I'll click there. Now let's say I want that to be nicely formatted. So I'll pick on home and then your formatting is over here. So I'll make it maybe like uh, 20 and I'll make it nice and black. Good. Notice when I changed the field size, uh, the font size, the size of the field did not change. So here's a quick way to do that. I'm going to go and get the sizing handle right there. And then we'll double click on the sizing handle, double click, and then it makes it as big as it, need, as it needs to. So anytime that you want specific text on your form, you pick on the design menu, and then that was called the AA or the, uh, the text box. Let's try uh, another one of those. So now watch what I'm going to do. I like to have a total of the freight and the order amount. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get the, this, uh, this is called the section break. I'm going to move my mouse right above the section break to get the black cross. So I can drag it down a little bit and give myself some more room there. Good. So I'm going to use uh, an AB, which is called a text box. And this is what you would do to add a calculation to a form. And it works the same way on a report as well, by the way. So I'll click there and I'll click right over here uh, underneath of the other field. We can always move it. Good. Now I'm going to move this where it says text 16. And I'm just going to move it over here. Good. And I'll move this one right next to that, um, right underneath the order amount. Right about there should be good. All right, now, when it says text uh, 16, that's just a label. So I'll just type in there, and I'll type in uh, order total. All right, so that's just specific text. Here's how to actually add the formula in. We start it with the text box, and it says unbound. So I'll click where it says unbound, and you come over here to the property sheet. Now, if the property sheet is not open, then you pick on this icon right there, that does say property sheet and that'll open. Uh, now all of these properties are for that one field. So you have a high, a high level of flexibility here. So I'll pick in the data tab. Your own formula will always go into the control source. So I'll pick in the three dots to the right of the control source. And we get a very powerful one that is called the expression builder. So in this case, the order total will be the order amount. I want to double click in the word order amount. That's one of the fields. And I'll say plus the freight. So notice how I just double click in the fields and it shows up up here in the uh, expression builder. And that's why it's called the expression builder. Uh, I could just double click in the fields. You can really make this a very complicated formula. You're just using your field names. Uh, and then you can have built in functions as well. Make that as complicated as you want that to be. So here I have the order amount plus the freight is going to be the order total. I'm going to click on OK there. Good. Now, uh, let's say uh, we're going to save that. Now, let's run the form. To run the form, we're going to go back to Design View, or Form View. I'm going to right-click and pick on Form View right there. Now, I have, uh, um, it says the PC guy up there. So, let's type in a freight of uh, $12. And the order amount is $152. And then, notice how it did the math of $164. So, that, that worked out nicely. Now, the next thing I said was if I had a new record, I want or the order date to pop up as today's date, and I want the required date to pop up as uh, maybe two weeks from today's date. So we'll go back to design view. It's always a back and forth process. You know, you try something, you see if it works, and then you go back to design view, and then uh, go back and forth between that and form view. So watch what I'll do. I'm going to pick on the order date field. You come over to the property sheet again. You're looking for the data tab. And then you look for one that's called the default value. That'll be the value that comes up when we add a new record. 
that's how they pre-populate a field. So here I'll say equals date. There's a built-in uh, function in ex an access that's called date, which means the current date. Now for the required date, I'll pick on that default value and I'll say equals date um, plus 14. All right, equals date, open parentheses, plus 14 means 14 days beyond the current date. So the default value is a great way to pre-populate a field. Let's see if it works. We're going to go ahead and run that with form view again. Now the, the default value do not, does not kick in for a new record. I mean, does not kick in for an existing record. It only kicks in for a new record. Let's add a new record. I'll pick in the word new right there. And notice how I did record this on March 6, 2016. That came up. Uh, and then the required date came up as um, as uh, two weeks from the current date. That's because of the default value property. Now let's say I don't want the order date to change at, once they once that's filled in, and I don't want the order the total to change, and also want, I want the order data to be formatted as a currency field. So watch what we'll do this time. We'll go back to design view. So I'll pick on the order date field and I'll pick in the data tab and I'll make that field locked. See where it says locked right there on the property sheet. That means they can't type over that. They won't, you know, they won't be able to change that. I'll do the same thing for the order total. We'll make that one locked as well over here in the property sheet. Now also for the order total, I want uh, that one to be, um, I want that one to be a format of currency. So I just put in the format tab of the property sheet and then for the format, I'll make a currency. So the property sheet gives you many, many ways to customize these fields as you can see. Let's go ahead and run it this time. We'll add a new record. The dates fill in. I'll pick a customer and I'll pick on an employee. Now notice how I cannot change the order date because I locked that field. Maybe I can change the required date. Maybe uh, they want a rush order, so I'll say 3 slash 10. So I did not lock that field, so I can type over that one. That's not a problem. I'll type in a freight of $12, and I'll type in the uh, amount of $55. Now it says $67 there, and I can't change the order total because I locked that one as well. So these are all the kind of things that you can do on a form. You, I would highly recommend that you use AutoForm or the Form Wizard. Now let's make it so that um, I like to, a really quick way to go to a specific record. Watch what we'll do. I'll go back to design view. And we're going to start adding more controls. Now if you follow my mouse, I'm going to make that form wider. So I'll go to the right edge. I'll get the black cross and drag it over a couple inches. That should be plenty of room. Now I'm looking for this control that's called a combo box. And uh, I want to make sure that the wizards are on because the access wizards are very helpful. I'm going to click on this pull down. And notice how it says um, use the control wizards. And if you look, it's grayed out there. It has a different color. If it was plain white, then you would click on that and make sure the wizards are on. So if you try that, if it's plain white, just click on that and then that'll turn the wizards on. Let me show you a couple of the wizards that are very helpful. First one is called a combo box. I think you'll like this one. It's going to be a pull down, but there's a special reason I'm going to use this. I'm going to click there. Now it says find a record on my form based on the value I select on my combo box. So that means it's going to jump to a specific record, which is really helpful. I, I would do this on every single form. Now uh, I'll use the order ID and the customer ID and the order date. Pick on next. Uh, it wants to hide the key column. I'm going to uncheck that. I want to show the key column, which is the order ID. Now you can make those columns smaller if you wanted to. Same way you would do it in Excel. Good. I'll pick on next. And then uh, I'll say um, select an order ID. I'll pick on finish. And I'm going to move this guy over here. Good. All right, we'll see how that works in just a second. Now, another thing I like on this form, uh, I like a button right here that will say close the screen or close the window. Then we can use the command button over here, 
that's another control and that will also have its own wizards so I'll click that and I'll put it right there and then we'll say form operations and I'll say close a form and I'll pick on next the command button wizard could do many things as you can see instead of close form maybe I'll say close window and we'll pick on finish I'm going to move that. Now let's see what all this does. So I'm going to right click in the tab and pick on form view. Now watch what I'll do. I'm going to click in the pull that we made and then I'll pick on 10260 and then it jumps right to that order. Did you see that? So with that combo box wizard, now I gave them a really quick way to jump to a specific record. I would really add that to every one of my forms because it just is a great lookup. And then when I'm done with this window, I'll say close window. Now this time it's going to save. I haven't saved it yet. Good. And it closes that window. So uh, now I have a new form that's called orders. If you double click on a form, then it opens up that form. But notice how it opens up onto the first record of the table. All right. So when you go to design view, there's so many things that you can do. You can change the field properties. You can move things around. You can add things to your form. Hopefully you got a couple ideas about managing your form in uh, design view. Now, another thing I'd like to add to this form is something that's called a subform. You see, this order is going to have multiple detail records. So I want to show the detail records that go with this order. Now, in order to do this one, you have to have two different tables with a common field. If you notice my database, I have the orders table. And that's all the orders, like we're showing you on that screen. And then I have the order details. And that's what they actually ordered for each uh, different order. And notice how that has the order ID, which is the common field. So this is going to be called a one-to-many relationship. One order has multiple detail lines. So in this case, watch what I'll do. This is going to go back to design view for the form. And I'm going to uh, give myself a little bit more space here. So I'm just going to move this uh, section break down a little bit. Good. And it's going to be another one of these controls. So I'll click on this pull down for the controls and I'm looking for this. I'm looking for one that will say sub form, which is this. And we'll move that right into this bottom section of the form and we'll click that. This will start off another wizard. So you can use an existing form to create your sub form or create it from a table. So I'm going to say use an existing table and I'll pick on next. And then the table I want to use is the order details table. Now I want to use all of those fields. So I'll pick on the double arrow to use all of those fields. I'll pick on next. Now it says, would you like to define which fields link your main form to the sub form? And it actually takes a guess and this guess is correct. Show the order details for each record in orders using the order ID. So once again, we're looking for that common field. And the common field is order ID. That one is correct. I'll pick on next. And that's it for the wizard. I'll pick on finish. Let's see what that does for us. Now, I just know that I'm going to have to make this uh, larger. So I'm just going to stretch it out. You can resize the, the, the subform object. Well, let's see what it's going to look like. I'm going to run my form. Notice for this order, now you can see what they actually purchased because of the subform one order has many detail lines and knows which orders goes with which details because of that common field order id now if i go to the bottom here and go to the next record then you'll see now i'm on 10249 and it'll show the detail uh, for 10249 and we'll keep on going with that that's called a sub form really powerful uh, so access does the one to many much better than excel does as you can see because of the sub form now, it was really important that we had two different tables there with a common field, as you can see. I'm going to close that window and we'll save it. Now, notice how the, the subform makes its own form in your Access database. So you can go back into that form and design view and make your changes there as well. Okay. And because that's a subform, if you make your changes there, it'll also show up on the main form the next time you run the main form. Now, 
The next form I want to show you is something that's called the Switchboard Manager. This really helps you make a nice main menu on your Access uh, database. Now, the Switchboard Manager used to be part of the Database Tools menu. And if you have an older version of Access, you might see the uh, Switchboard Manager under the Database Tools. But if you have a newer version, here's what you have to do. You have to get it from the uh, Quick Access Toolbar. So I'm going to click on that pull down and I'll pick on uh, more commands and then you're on where you can add things to the quick access toolbar. To find the switchboard manager, we're going to come up here and pick on all commands. Now they're in alphabetical order and I'll scroll all the way down until you can see the switchboard manager. There it is. And I'll pick on add. Good. And I'll pick on OK. So you actually add that to your switchboard manager or to your uh, quick access toolbar. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to, it says the switchboard manager was unable to find a valid switchboard in this database. Would you like to create one? Yes, I would. So I'll pick on yes. You always say yes here. Now the main switchboard is the main menu. So I'm just going to edit the main switchboard and I'll pick on new to add a new item to the switchboard. And I'll say add a new order. Now look at the things the switchboard can do. It can run uh, another form, another report, a macro, we'll do some different things there. So I'll say open form in add mode, which is going to open it, that orders form and then automatically add a new record. That's what add mode means. And I'll pick on the orders form. So I have add a new order for a text open a form in add mode and the form is orders. Now let's uh, do another choice in the menu. I'll pick on new again and I'll say um, look up existing orders And for the command, I'll say open form in edit mode, which means it's going to open up that form and put you on the first record. And then you can go through all the different records and the form will be orders. So I have look up existing orders, open form in edit mode, and the form is orders. And that'll be the second choice of the menu. And you can see how this works. It's really not that hard to use the switchboard manager. I'll pick on new there and I'll say um, manage product list. And I'll say open form in edit mode. By the way, even though they're in edit mode, they can add records from edit mode. Uh, it's just that in edit mode, you'll be able to see all the previous records as well. And then I'll say um, the form products. Let's do one more on the switchboard. I'll pick on new and I'll say manage uh, shippers. And I'll say open form in edit mode and the form will be shippers. So I like the switchboard manager a lot because it can run other forms or other reports. Now let's see what we just made. I'm going to click on OK. See our four choices. I'll pick on close and then I'll pick on close again. Now follow my mouse down here. Notice how you have tables, queries, forms. Uh, and then reports will be underneath of that if you had reports in your database. Uh, and then I'm going to double click on the switchboard form, double click. The switchboard manager made the switchboard form. And now notice how we have a really nice main, main menu for the main, uh, end user. I'll say add a new order. That's going to open up the order form and put them in a new record automatically. Notice how the dates automatically fill in for a new record. I can pick a customer, pick up employee. Um, maybe the freight is $12 and the order amount is for, uh, 14 is, uh, 144 and it did the math for us. Okay. Then I can add some products there because of that sub form as well. That, that made a new record because we said open the form in add mode. I'm going to pick on close, look up existing orders. That's going to put us onto the uh, order form. And now I could use my pull down perhaps to go to a different order. Good. Pick on close window. I'm going to say manage product list. And that's going to open up the uh, products form that we used. Close that. 
Now, of course, you would add buttons to that to make it, um, you know, more user friendly. Maybe even the combo box. I would do that to all my forms. I'm just showing you how we were able to make a quick main menu with our main switchboard, uh, with the switchboard manager. And then I'll pick on manage shippers and it opens up that form as well. So today I showed you how you can quickly make a form with the auto form or with the form wizard. I showed you a little bit about design view and how you can change your fields and add the controls and add a sub form. The sub form is when you do a one to many. Then I showed you how to make a nice main menu using the switchboard manager, which makes the switchboard form. I hope that you enjoyed today's uh, session on access forms. And uh, my name is Tom Fergali, and I'll see you the next time. Thanks, everybody.